What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today's video I wanted to talk about how I would grow a new mushroom farm from zero dollars to a hundred thousand dollars in annual revenue. So our mushroom farm started back in June of 2018 and if I could do it all over again this is what I would do. So if you're interested in a more detailed breakdown of this video check out our ebook Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market, How to Make a Living Growing Gourmet Mushrooms at Home. That's gonna have more detailed analysis of our steps that we did to grow our business to this point. There's a lot of shortcuts and more specific details of our processes. Also consider joining our YouTube Premium Membership Series. So we're, we just started offering premium memberships last month. Check out the different tiers for that if you want to help support our YouTube channel and really get exclusive content and more IP that goes along with growing mushrooms. So the first thing I would do if I was starting over is find a space that's appropriate for growing mushrooms in your area. So for us, that was our basement at our old house in Denver. Um, so it was about 800 square feet of total space about 400 square feet of that space was devoted to uh, mushroom growing in the very beginning. And about 400 square feet was for our lab and for our office space. So one thing to consider when you're picking your space is that you want it to be really accessible to supplies. So one of the challenges of doing it in a basement was that we had to haul all of our supplies up and down a flight of stairs. If I could do it over, I probably would do it in a garage or an insulated shed, something with uh, ground access because towards the end, we were getting really large deliveries of substrate and it was a lot of labor to haul that downstairs when I wanted to do my, uh, my substrate prep and stuff. After finding a good space, what I would recommend doing is buying ready to fruit blocks. One mistake that people make is that they start off growing all their mushrooms from cultures and like doing everything all at once. And this leads to a large headache that I experienced myself because there's a learning curve to this process. So a lot of people will get frustrated with contamination and getting the right moisture content, but all of this could be avoided if you buy ready to fruit blocks. And another thing is to start off in more of a temporary grow um, fruiting situation. So for us, we started in grow tents, which is a really common option and a really good option. We still use grow tents. So if you're interested in the grow tents that we use, uh, check out our Amazon affiliate page. Um, I'm still figuring out what, how many tents that I want for the grow cycle as my business grows. One big mistake that people make early on is they will invest a ton of money into this really sophisticated fruiting chamber and then as their business grows that kind of becomes irrelevant so instead of taking that capital and investing it into something else they've kind of wasted it in this really sophisticated grow chamber that they didn't necessarily need early on so once again in our ebook it kind of breaks down how we set up our first grow tent um, the, the, the positive thing about that as well is you can get away with fruiting all of your mushrooms in one tent and when it gets really dirty and beat up, you just buy a new one and swap it out and they're not that expensive and um, it works really well to start. Okay, so I would seek out a local grower and find a ready to fruit block. The average price these days is about 20 to $25 per 10 pound block. If you can get it below that, even better. Um, one of the drawbacks at this stage is you're not going to have a big margin. I don't think it would be very profitable to only go off of ready to fruit blocks at, you know, $25 a pound for fresh mushrooms. Um, you're, you're almost going to break even or make, you know, a little bit of profit doing this. So um, it is a good opportunity though to seek out a local market that you will be selling your mushrooms at. So for us, we, uh, we started off in this crunchy granola uh, grocer early on, 
and um, they found us on a Craigslist ad, and it really worked for us because it allowed us to scale up our production. Um, and then we shortly after that, we joined a farmer's market, and then that really helped things accelerate. So I would start off, find your space, find a quality farmer that will, is willing to sell you ready-to-fruit blocks, and then also um, seek out a local market so that way you're ready to get to the next level, um, which would be producing your own bulk substrate. So this is really going to increase your margins. Um, if you're buying grain spawn, um, you're going to want to seek out a good supplier of that as well. Um, do your research. There's lots of grain spawn producers, and that will help kind of increase your margin to about $10 to $12 per 10-pound block at that point, which is going to start generating capital so that you can grow your business. At this stage, you're going to want to invest in a sterilizer. So I'm a big fan of the Bubba Barrel steamers, um, especially the ones with casters. That's what we use because we can sterilize in one part of our farm. And then when it's done, we can swap those out, bring them into the lab, put a new barrel in its place. And that really increases the efficiency a lot of uh, farmers these days are using these horse trough steamers, which are really good as well. There's a little bit more labor involved, but you can fit a lot more blocks at once in these horse trough steamers. So if I was doing it over, I might start in one of those, but I still love my bubble barrels and I think that they're much more efficient. So either cost versus labor efficiency, um, that's gonna be up to you guys. Um, another investment that you'll have to make at this point is to invest in a flow hood. So if you're interested in learning more about the differences between vertical and horizontal flow hoods or flow hood maintenance, check out our videos on that. But this is going to be an important aspect of your mushroom farm. So um, if you're getting a bubble barrel, maybe $3,000. If you're getting a flow hood, probably another $3,000 at this point. However, it's really going to increase your, your profit margins if you're making your own bulk substrate and you're um, just inoculating with pre-made grain spawn. So a lot of farms get stuck at this point. It has good enough margins and it's not um, really labor intensive at this stage. You're kind of just inoculating blocks, moving them into the fruiting room, letting them fruit and selling them either at a market or um, a wholesale price to a chef or at a, at a different grocer. Okay, so if you wanna take your grow for, from you know the 10 to $12 margin to the next level, which would be closer to $20 profit margin per block, you're going to want to make your own grain spawn. Now, this adds a lot more logistics to the farming. Um, it's going to increase the lead time on that block going to the fruiting room. It's also going to add risk with contamination because you have to inoculate the grain spawn and then you have to inoculate the bulk substrate. However, at this stage, if you're really, you know, focusing on clean, cleaning and aseptic technique, and you have a good relationship with your vendors and with you know, your customers, this could really help launch you to that next phase of $100,000 in annual revenue. So if you're producing 100 blocks a week at $20 a block, and you do that for a year, that's about $2,000 profit if you're selling all of your mushrooms and your contamination is really low. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about the the uh, schedule and the lead times and some of the more um, complicated logistics definitely consider joining our youtube premium membership we're going to be launching um, a bunch of e premium exclusive videos that talk about the the logistics behind scaling your farm as well as uh, different schedules and right now there's a 20 percent off um, discount on our cultures for anyone who joins our premium YouTube series. At this phase, um, it's going to be a lot more labor than when you just bought fruiting blocks and you're picking them and selling them. So 
some farms struggle at this phase because it is a lot of manual labor. So I myself am a workaholic. I really like the grind of the mushrooms during the season. However, I recommend either hiring someone or if you're like myself, then you know you can get away with it up to a certain point. But a lot of farms will get to this point and then they'll kind of get burned out after a couple years. Another thing you can do is go seasonal like we do, and that gives you a couple weeks to shut things down and really clean your grow and start fresh and think about what you're gonna do next season. All right, guys, and then if you're interested in taking it to the next level, you can start to add value add products like mushroom seasonings, um, different dried mushrooms, you know, different processed mushroom products, cultures, classes. If you're interested, we do two day workshops here on our farm. Also, we do these YouTube videos, which I am really passionate about. Thanks for watching that video. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Um, definitely check out our YouTube memberships if you want to help support the channel. There's different levels if you're a hobbyist, a weekend warrior, or a commercial mushroom farm and you want access to all of that data, um, consultations, premium exclusive videos, and that 20% off culture discount. Okay, guys, until next time, much love.